photographer, filmmaker, educator, and I guess a visual storyteller. San Antonio, Texas, raised in New York City, second generation a Mexican American. I've lived in all five boroughs, but Lower East Side being like my home. I come from a family of creatives, I could say. Um, my grandfather was a part-time uh, wedding photographer, um, my aunt, a fashion photographer, and that's how we ended up in New York City. Uh, my aunt was studying um, photography in Texas and then ended up coming to New York in the 90s, and my mom followed her. <laughs> and my mother just like a documentarian, just documenting like my childhood and like family events. So just being around like my family's history of the love for photography, like that just resonated with me growing up. So when we moved to New York City in the 90s, I was like six years old and um, my mom and my aunt worked in a, a photo studio. And so I grew up around photography all day, every day. My mother is really creative in her own way and like our home was curated by her. So like every wall in here is like a different color, but it's supposed to represent our roots where we come from. So she's like, I want our home to feel like Mexico. So all of the walls are really vibrant and bright and that's because of her. But um, if it wasn't for my tia, my aunt Chayo Mata, fashion photographer extraordinaire, um, this is a self-portrait she made before she passed away. Um, but yeah, growing up around her in the photo studio and like seeing her passion, her drive, her energy and like love for photography, like really uh, influenced me and how I work. But um, in fashion, you create these fantasy worlds that later on growing up, I wanted to tell stories about my life and reality. So I already knew like at a young age that I'm like, I want to tell real stories. So my first memories of like making photos was my first punk show in Tompkins Square Park. So like documenting that first show, I went to many shows after that show at Tompkins. So music was a big passion of mine. So I would carry my camera, document New York City's punk scene. And then uh, later on in life at, during college, I, uh, I went to a punk show that was all punks of color. That was what it was called, punks of color. And I was like, this is my dream show because growing up, most of the majority of the shows were predominantly white male scene, right? So when I went to that show, it, it was like, I need a document. Going to punk shows like at a young age, I think I was like in eighth grade when I went to my first punk show at Tompkins. Like, you know, you're young, you're not thinking about politics and you know how things are affecting your daily life. So I'm thankful for punk music for like, you know, bringing that political awareness, um, you know, towards, you know, my daily life and how it's impacting our society. Later on, I find my, I found myself being really dedicated to also education, um, I have a really strong connection with the high school that I graduated from um, called City As High School. So it literally is like the city is your school. 
So when I graduated from there, I had I started making graduation portraits. So like for the past, I think six years, I've been making their senior portraits. And I remember telling uh, one of my advisors, I was like, I really want to make a yearbook, you know, about the school with the students. And two years ago, that my advisor, her name's Yusuri, she was like, hey, Desne, I think we have funds for a teaching artist to do the yearbook. And so that's how this yearbook came to be. Um, it was inspired by punk like DIY zines. So we made a lot of collages. Uh, there's a lot of poetry involved here. And then that led to artists in residency at the girls club in collaboration with uh, Worthless Studios, where I was able to take over this airstream that was converted into a dark room. So it turned into like this photo clubhouse where like my students from the girls club um, learned how to develop and shoot film photos of the neighborhood. It was called One Square Mile. That became a clubhouse where I met Zero, who is a local photographer, and Nadia, who is a mother to one of my students, Rosa, who is one of my neighbors. From that moment, I was inspired by this yearbook, and I'm like, hey, like, why don't we make a yearbook about our neighborhood? And then that led to a community project that I'm working on now um, called the Lower East Side Yearbook that I'm working on with my neighbors. My process, it was hard because I had I have so many ideas, right? And I'm like, how do I how do I do all these things? And I, at first, it was very overwhelming. Like, where do I start? So I actually reached out to my friend Aman, who is a great like oral historian interviewer, and we just started sitting down with my neighbors and like asking them questions about their memories of the neighborhood. They were flipping through their uh, family photo albums, and that's how we started. I posted up in, in one of the senior buildings, and we were like handing out flyers. So we made like a hundred copies, and I just put them under people's doors, and I told them to reach out to our email. We got like one email, but <laughs> that's how we were starting to spread the word at first. But. Um, when I posted up in that lobby, you met Rosa, and um, she brought this photo of her family um, in front of her building, I believe. But um, when she brought this, her daughter, I, ha I had some paper and markers, and I was like, can you draw me um, a picture of what, you know, what you're seeing here? And this is what she drew, and so we ended up on the spread. Hopefully in the yearbook, it's gonna look like this. So it's a collaboration between her daughter and her family photo album. But yeah, so that's part of the process. And like, I feel like this project is taking a life of its own. I keep saying that, but it really, it truly is. So I'm Rosalie Rodriguez. I was born and raised in the Lower East Side, 45 years strong. The Low East Side is home. It's not going to be easy to get rid of us. And that's what we feel like on all, everywhere from housing to the people moving across the streets, everything just getting so expensive. And it's like, yeah, we still here and we're going to make noise. It's not going to be easy to get rid of us. So that's what the LES yearbook is about. We still here. <laughs> Another thing that inspired me, though, were issue, are issues that are going on um, in public housing. NYCHA wants to privatize all public housing developments in New York City. NYCHA's plan to privatize public housing means bringing in private developers and investors to manage and finance repairs and moder modernization of housing. So I feel like with this yearbook, with all the workshops that we're doing, it'll also like bring awareness to what's happening to our homes. My first home was here, like in this apartment that I'm at. 
And people always say like, Desi, why do you care so much about public housing? And I never really share like my personal story with anyone because it's just, I think right now is the right time to do it. Um, so growing up in New York City, um, there was a moment my mother and I went through the shelter system, right? So I know what it's like to not have a home. And like, this was my first home. This is where I had my first bedroom. You know, this is my childhood home. So Lower East Side is home. And um, that's why I'm so connected to my neighborhood and, and where I'm from. And I'm, and I'm grateful for public housing, you know? Like I can be an artist. And, and still survive in New York City. And it's because of public housing, because it's based on your income, right? There's nowhere else that you could do that right now. So um, yeah, that's really, really important to me. Lower East Side has like a really, really long history of resilience. When you talk about like Tompkins Square Park was always a meeting place for people that were coming together like to fight the system. That oppression and that raw energy and that, and that fiery spirit that really I think is in the ground here. My name is Zero. I am born and raised on the Lower East Side, um, proud New Yorkian. I mean, the LES Yearbook Project for me, it's a community project. Right now for me, I'm focused on trying to get as many people involved as I can. Anybody that I speak to from the neighborhood, I'm like, hey, Elias yearbook, come through, get your memories, get, write your stories, write your love letters. Like, that's the biggest part, I think. And then just documenting, because most of what I do is document the neighborhood with my camera. You don't hear stories from people that live in the projects. The only light you ever hear is negative. You know, someone got shot, someone that, but there's so much more here than that. That story is so old and so not real. Like, yes, a tiny, you know what I mean? But it's a fraction of what's happening. There are people here really building and living their lives and, I, and they, deserve to have their, they deserve to have their voices heard and they deserve to tell their own stories and their own words. And that's what this project is. It's taking a collective of an entire neighborhood that is always overlooked and always demonized in the press and letting them shine. So my name is Nadia Ramnarayan. I am a third generation LES, born and bred. I am the graffiti, one of the graffiti historians here. So basically I got a handful of graffiti writers that are from LES to participate in this project. And because I am who I am, they're willing to actually come forward and say who they are and uh, just to put their stamp on being from Elias is important. So the Lower East Side yearbook to me, hopefully when it's finished, will be an encyclopedia of Elias and bring to people the essence of what it was, where it is and where it's going. I want this yearbook to be a prototype and an example that other like public housing developments can like tell their own stories and like remix it and, you know, have a record that, you know, we exist and this is our story.